Seriously. Well played. Well played. Impressive. Well played. I don't think I've ever been so excited for a new Magic set. Probably since... I was pretty excited about Origins years ago. Um, I was pretty excited years ago for Cons. I remember that because the fetches. And then before that, probably Scars. Maybe Original Innistrad. Well played. I gotta give you credit. Never thought you had it in you. Never thought you would really just go the distance, and then when you got the distance, you pulled the red rope in the middle of the room, and you just you double tapped it. So, the week is over. At this point in time, as of the filming of this video, Modern Masters 2017 booster boxes are currently on TCG Player for probably around 220 now. eBay is maybe about 210 um, I know by the time this video goes live on Friday, or Friday afternoon, or Friday night, whatever time it goes, I know it's going to be higher. Um, I've had a couple people, we've been monitoring and tracking how many people, how many sellers are on TCG Player, and how many total boxes are listed at any given time, and the numbers are ridiculous. Like, you could literally refresh TCG Player, and there's about one box selling on average per minute you know, on when you average it out per hour. So on an, any given hour, there are literally 30, 40, sometimes 50 or 60 booster boxes disappearing from supply per hour. And this is at the 215 to 220 range. I know by the time this video goes live on Friday, which is March 3rd, March 3rd, I have a feeling that TCG player low is probably going to be like maybe 225. On Friday morning, and maybe eBay's maybe 230, 10 people in the event, I guess, and I'm number 9. It's going well. We're doing very well. Five or six pet hit now. Mm, that wasn't it. That was not even a pet. Uh, that'll be never die. spawn a bunch of the big ass Kongs. Man is incredible. The allocation, the breakdown of the value, and the diversity of the value, and the one theory, which one of the theories in my older videos turned out to be pretty accurate, and that particular theory was about the downshifting of value. I thought that was a really far-fetched, seriously kind of, eh, are you kidding me? That's kind of, I don't know, man, that's kind of like a whole illusion thing, I don't know, that just a little, I don't know, but turned out... You know, when you start running the numbers and people are starting to calculate expected value and all this stuff again. So it turns out that, sure enough, the expected value and the numbers, the rarity, the downshift has made a huge difference. The volatility on the booster box's value has been reduced 
I don't want to say like a certain number of standard deviations or a certain amount of volatility, but there's definitely, in my opinion, it looks to be about a 20, 30% reduction in volatility on the extreme low and high of a booster box value in this set. This is mostly caused because the value in the mythics are good because of, you know, Lily, Tarmogoyf again, and Snappy. And then, of course, you know, Cavern of Souls, some other ones, but between Liliana and Goyf, probably between 60 and 100 a piece, wherever they level out at, they could go higher, they could go lower. They're probably going to get a beating depending on print run size, which we don't know. Besides those two mythics, the mythic slot isn't really that great financially, but the rare slot, it just almost looks like they designed the rare slot and they put all the different sets in. The thing, okay, the thing nobody seemed to grasp, and I didn't see this coming, is when they said they were going to pull Modern Masters 2017 cards for the set from the Gate Crash Return to Rav Dragon's Maze, the newer era, that's what created the, oh, well, shit, where's the value going to be? You know, there was no hint or any form of understanding that they would go back to 2000, what? 2009? For the original enemy fetch lands that were last pre-printed in original Zendikar, there was no hints or intentions or angles that they would go back and pull Damnation, that they would go back and pull enemy fetches. There was no, you know, clarity on that. And some people say that was good, because if there was from the beginning, there wouldn't have been a lot of people who had the opportunity to buy the boxes substantially cheaper compared to where they are as of the filming of this video and probably where they're going to end up by release date. The mark, it is, four, it's, it's scary. Three, it, it's parabolically two, just, one. It, it's, it's nerve wrecking because the rate of change is unlike, as any person who's been doing magic for a long time, well played, very impressive. I have nothing negative to say about Wizards of the Coast in this video. Write it down, timestamp it, notarize my face, and rub yourself, do whatever you gotta do because guess what? This is impressive. I can't, I can't even say anything bad. Sounds I mean, great. they didn't even need to put the enemy fetch lands in the set. But it's like they designed the whole set. And the rare land was, you know, obviously, what, Cavern of Souls? With new art, by the way. Um, <laughs> and then after they did that, they were like, eh, we like to expect value around MSRP, but F it. Let's push that shit into the 300s. Dump all five original Zen enemy fetches in. And it's like... It's just like, it, I mean, I understand why because of all the multicolors. I mean, I, I get it because of the theme of the draft environment for the box. I mean, I get it, but wow. I mean, they could have easily achieved that with the uncommon lands and the common lands when they put in the set. But the fact that they put 30, I mean, the cra even if Arid Mesa, is, even if it, the fetch lands are as low as 30 and as high as only 45. Even if they all get chopped by 50%, we'll assume that they stay that low. Which, eh, that's debatable. Especially the foil fetches. Ooh, those are going to stay pricey. Even if they're at $30 to $40 a fetch land, instead of the 50 to 80 Even if they lose 50%, I mean, it's just like, it didn't seem necessary, but holy cow. I've never had a, such a big slap in the balls across the face. Surprise. Like, I, I just, wow, I'm speechless. It's just incredible. And it, it leads to the next part of the conversation. And the next part of the conversation is, is this something we should all be happy and proud about? Or is this something that there is something else going on here? Because the very first thing I heard when there's uh, enemy fetches was, oh my god, OMG. Freaked out, took my clothes off, went to the dirtiest website I could find. Creepy Rudy, calm down. Relaxed, and then I went, holy crap, that's still happening. And then after that, I turned around, and I was like, wait a minute. If they put the enemy fetches in this, that pretty much means they're not going to put the fetches in Amonkhet in the next block. Which is kind of what we were all hoping for, which was actually fetch lands in the standard set. On a mass-produced standard set. This feels like to me an indication that they are not going to put the fetch land back in a standard environment. That's kind of what it feels like. That's the negative aspect of it. Some people, that's good. Some people, it's bad. Because obviously, you know, color fixing and to be able to fix your mana base with fetches in a standard environment and people can play three, four colors or whatever the hell they want to do, it becomes, it does up the amperage, it does up the power level, but the thing is, 
I don't know. That's the part that kind of made me... Well, that sucks, because now there's not going to be, like, the new cons of Tarkir with the other five Fetchlands in a standard environment, so that's the only negative thing that kind of had me go, is that good or bad? I'm not really sure. I'm sure everyone in the comment section is going to pretty much say yay or nay, give their rationale. Or they cannot say any of that and just say Creepy Rudy is just weird, and you know what? We're going to have to pause Creepy Rudy, because you know what? Sensitivity Rudy is here to comfort everybody. You have and you know what? I think it's still a good thing. And this is the best marketing flow we've ever seen. Not ever seen. Definitely. The orchestration of downplaying the set, acting like nothing was happening, and we're going to skip it and just go to Amonkhet, and everybody's like, what happened to Modern Masters? Coming out in a month, no one's talking about it. And then waiting for pre order windows closed, and everything was calm, and everybody's really fresh in the head. Everybody's just reminding themselves of the Eternal Master reprint. People are nervous. Everybody's stroking themselves. And people were just like, I'm afraid of an Eternal Master pound town again. So what happened? All the stores, LGS is everywhere. Anybody who had access to the boxes, the distributors, whoever they were, across the country, tried to fire sale and get the hell out of their positions as quickly as possible. And as I was fondling the greed monster, sensitive Rudy's here to tell you. A lot of stores are just in panic mode. I shouldn't even get through to one distributor. Because the phone lines were just ridiculous. Alright, moving on. There is a pure blown panic of the stores that realize how bad they screwed up. But then again, you know, Wizards didn't say the set was bad. They didn't turn around and tell anybody, get rid of it, we're gonna make something crappy. This is something we all assumed. I even assumed it based on the behavior and the information at the time. I most of the stores who ended up selling their boxes at 170 locally, 180 online, I understand. Obviously, with all information provided now, it's clearly not the best decision. It was clearly a mistake. And I feel bad for all the stores. I really do. Because, like I said, for filming this video, boxes are in the 220. I know by the time you guys are watching this, I'm sure you guys can quote at the bottom, it's probably going to be 230. Hell, I wouldn't even be surprised if we hit MSRP. And quite frankly, the fact that Tarmogoyz was just added because of the hell of it, the Fetchlands were just in there for the hell of it, in addition to everything, you know, I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see these boxes pushing 300. It's going to be like Eternal Masters price. The only difference is, it is public knowledge that these boxes are more readily available compared to Eternal Masters. We now know why they're more readily available, because Wizards knew the demand in the market was going to go into frenzy, and it, the product needed to be saturated. The thing a lot of stores didn't know was that this was going to be a major, major financial windfall for a lot of people. If you have a small store in, you know, I don't know, New York or California, and you get 50 or 100 boxes, you know, and you fire sold them at 170 locally and 180 online, you were looking at making between, what, maybe $15, $10 online, maybe $20 locally per box, maybe $25? You know, if you average $20 profit a box times your 100 box allocation, that's two grand. Well, if these boxes are pushing, you know, eventually going to go to 230 plus, you know, you could be looking at five, ten thousand profit for a small store, and that's a really big deal for a lot of small stores. Hence, brings us to the next part of this video. This is the next topic, which is cancellation of the order. I mean, the one of the head eBay corporate people even messaged me on Twitter, wanting information from people to send them directly to any of the sellers who are canceling the order. I mean, for them to actually post that and reply to me on Twitter, I mean, to acknowledge it, it shows that they're aware of it, and there's a lot of it going on. Between those messages, which I just pointed at everyone, hey, contact that person, or hey, shoot a message to Jeremy at MTG headquarters, he's trying to publicly shame any stores that are canceling orders, and he wants to do a video on that, so I don't know if he's been able to get some information on that, but you guys can do that, because he wants to actually kind of slap them out in public and let people know that, hey, these are the people who do it. So, I mean, I understand both sides, but the thing is, at the end of the day, hands flipping down, if you pre-order to the public, and it's sight unseen, 
we don't know the cards in the set. And customers give you the money. You have to honor the order if you're a small store. It sucks, but if you don't like the risk, you cannot do a pre-order that early. Because think about it. The whole environment of pre-orders that early is a really bad, shitty business model. Because this is what happens. The entire thing is a lose-lose. All parties end up getting upset when you do pre-order. That's why you don't see... Dude, that's the very next thing. People are like, Rudy, uh, I checked your eBay. I looked on YouTube. I looked on your Patreon. You haven't sold a single box. Or listed a single box. And that is 100% true. I don't have my firm allocation numbers yet. It's probably going to be pretty significant. But it's probably not going to be 1,200 boxes so I can give all my patients a box. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to get 1,200 boxes to give, sell to the patrons at whatever, 200 or something. I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to have the product. It's not possible. I'd love to, but no matter how big the print run is, I'm, I'm not going to get 1,200 boxes. I'm old. You know, MM 2015, I ended up getting, I think, 250 boxes. Original Modern Masters, I think I got 50 or 60, I think it was. I can't remember. Eternal Masters Wave 1, I got 40 boxes. And then, you know, of course, Wave 2, because I was just went after everybody, now I have 100. So, that's the thing with the new 2017 Modern Masters. So, I understand all sides. But the problem is, if you do pre-orders, let's say you sell everybody at 180 a box. Okay, if the box goes to 300, the store's upset, they get pissed, they cancel orders, or they don't cancel orders, and they lose a shit ton of potential opportunity costs. Shitty situation for the store, customer win. Okay, so part two. Boxes are $250, they pre order them to the customers, the box price is 10 to 170 All the customers are upset, they're asking for refunds, they want to cancel their order to rebuy at a lower price. The customer's upset, the store owner gets frustrated. The pre order system is a shitty system. There's only one reason the pre order system exists for eBay, PC player, for anything. It's because of the way the operations work. A lot of bigger accounts, distributors, Watsi, different places even around the country, not just in Magic, in general, operate on a 30-day net term system. So if you're an established company, you are able to buy, you know, $50,000 with a Eternal Masters or Modern Masters or whatever it is, and you have 30 days to literally pay the distributor or whoever it is or whatever the product is you're buying. These people want to pre-sale, front run the product, get the cash in advance to hedge that risk. That is the biggest reason I think even CISO exists. And that's also the biggest reason for the risks associated with it. Again, that, that's why you get that. Eh. So, that's all I have to say about that. Hopefully most stores honor the prices for the people who paid 170s and 180s, but it's not looking good because my instinct at this point of the time in the filming of this video and I know it's too early to tell, and this is like Thursday night. Tarmogoyf is just spoiled. Boxes are about 220s. I I'm afraid, I mean, we're breaking MSRP. That's my instinct. By the time this video goes live, it probably will already. We're going to break MSRP, and I honestly think we're going high. So my rationale is because we've got three weeks till the damn product comes out. All the reserves and pre-orders, everything's already on the internet, and they're getting gobbled up. There's no restock right now. There's no additional inventory being listed on the internet. What you see is what you got. And we've got what? Takes a third? So we've got what? 14 more days of people buying 30, 40, 50 boxes a day per hour or something on TCG Player? The supply is getting the shit kicked out of it and is getting just sucked dry. That is definitely what she said. So what's happening is that demand, that pinpoint, that equilibrium is going to keep going higher. 14 days of supply suction is pretty much going to keep pushing that price up. There's no way around it. And the fact that nobody can relist more inventory because it's too early in the game to know if we're getting a ton of restocks, if there's a million more boxes, or if, quite frankly, uh, the print run may not be as high as we think. The only thing we know for a fact, and the reason we think the print run is so high, is because of the different style of distribution this time around. It's a non, it's a full-blown non-WPN product. So basically, from all the people I've texted and talked to, even small stores, hell, hardware stores, according to Kevin Crow's deck builder, get specialty products. I mean, there are stores and people. I went to a damn wallpaper store, and they had magic boosters and Pokemon stuff. So what's happening is everybody's going to get the product this time. Small stores are probably at 20, 30 bucks. Even medium to small, you normally get 30 or 40 boxes, you're probably going to get 100. 
the big stores who get 100 are probably going to get one to two thousand. So I wish I could get that much. That'd be badass. But you know, that's literally top one percent of the store. So the supply is going to be substantial. But the million dollar question that nobody knows, and will never know until the time unfolds, is going to be after this initial wave hit, how big will be the restock? How often over the next six to nine months to the end of the year? Is there going to be continuous modern masters coming in? And I have a feeling it's going to go one of two ways. We're either going to keep going, it's going to get crazy, and prices are going to get slaughtered. I mean, I already think rares and mythics in the set, especially rares and below, are going to get slaughtered by at least 30 to 50 percent. Mythics probably 40 to 50 percent. The shit's going down. But where we bottom out and hit that pair of, we got to bottom out. We got to hit capitulation. When we hit that full-blown panic bottom on the single, you will see a retrace back up. Until that happens, we don't know. So, that was the last thing I want to talk about. So, the rare downshift hit. Again, how I mentioned the values in the rare slot versus the mythic. I've never seen even rare cards down. Double, double tax downshift at common. That actually affects copper because they're putting rares at common. I've never seen that. And you got, I mean, they even put Inquisition back down to uncommon. I mean, for the people who got conspiracy, they're like, yeah, I got Inquisition at rare. Oh, wait, now it's an uncommon again. I mean, it's crazy. That is some wild shit. So, that's another major variable with what's going on. Is the fact that they made the downshift in rare. So, it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the video. That is why you're going to see more leveled out expected value. You're not going to see a $1,000 box and a $50 box. That's gonna, it's going to be a tighter range. So for people who open on a smaller scale or for a customer perspective, it's going to create a better customer experience because you're not going to have one guy here getting slaughtered and he's going to call himself Timmy and the guy next to him making a thousand dollars and he thinks he's just, you know, Captain Penis over here. We don't know. So I think instead of the $50 box and a thousand dollar box, it's going to be squeezed more to a good tighter range. We like tighter range. So that's really all I have to say. I want to summarize everything. So I know the questions people are going to ask are, so Rudy, what are you going to do with your boxes? As of right now, I haven't decided if I'm going to do like a couple hundred box mass opening and filming and just like a mass box opening project, or quite frankly, we're just going to sell them sealed and then hope we get a major restock, then do other things. Obviously, we'll do some box openings on the channels and different things like that once we get more information. And in addition to that, pretty soon when it gets closer and once the flipping dust settles, you know, I'll figure out what I think I should list mine for. I'll probably take something like eBay or I'll probably take like TCG player minus 20% or something. I don't know. It depends. I mean, these things can end up being $300 booster boxes. I mean, and that makes me nervous, especially when we break above that 240 250 When we start going way above MSRP, that junk makes me nervous. So I, it's just the biggest thing with this whole thing is the number one risk is not the price of the reprints not the distribution not wpn the biggest risk of all these things is are we going to experience the double tap in six months like the eternal masters surprise reprint? that's the risk to all these things and we don't know so until then that's really all i have to say um this is rudy from alpha investments we do have a few really wild new things coming with the channel and uh, one of them is going to be unveiled in the next few weeks going to be kind of a new sub series something really cool that a uh, I think a lot of people might appreciate, you know, it's kind of one of those things where there's not much going on on weekdays, you'll just turn off the lights and go home. And uh, so tell me what everyone thinks. I don't know what everyone's plans are with Modern Masters.